Hi, welcome to my channel, Why the Book Wins. My name is Laura, and before we get into today's video, I would like to ask that you subscribe to my channel. It would mean so, so much to me if you enjoy book-related content. Specifically, I collect, uh, like I do book reviews, but I also collect special edition books and first editions and, and like antique vintage books, and I show them off every Sunday. And so I do that, but then I also do like at some point during the week, I do some kind of other video, usually book related. Plus, I also do book and movie comparisons where I compare the book with its movie adaptation. And my book and movie comparison is also a podcast. So if you search why the book wins on whatever podcasting platform you use, you'll be able to find my podcast. But anyway, if you subscribe to my channel, it would mean a lot to me if you love book related content. And I do movie related content too sometimes, but yeah, if that interests you, you should definitely subscribe to my channel. And today's video, I am sharing some of my favorite nonfiction books. And these aren't self-help, they're more like memoirs. They're mainly memoirs. A few books in here are um, like books that someone researched and then wrote about. <laughs> but they're written like, they're like creative nonfiction. So it's written like a novel and it's so interesting and it's all true. So. It's not like some boring slog to get through or something like these are nonfiction books that are really interesting in one way or another. And to start, I am sharing one that just everybody should read, and that is 12 Years a Slave by Solomon Northrup. This was published in the 1800s, um, before the Civil War. But Solomon Northrup was a black man and he was born free, and then he was living in the North, and then he gets kidnapped, and he gets sold into slavery even though he's a free man and he's a slave for 12 years before he is he, he's able to uh, befriend this Canadian and the Canadian helps him become free by contacting his family in the north. So this one is great because like it can be a hard book to read sometimes because it's about slavery but I think that's one of the reasons it's so important is because how many books do we have that were written by someone who was a slave? Like hardly any, any at all because slaves couldn't read or write for the most part. So just historically, this is a good one to read. And Northrup, he's well written. He's a good writer too, and he's just very insightful. And it was just a really interesting book. And it it is like uplifting. I don't know, maybe uplifting isn't the right word. But he does make it home in the end and if you've seen the movie like it's a powerful ending when he finally sees his family again but yeah he ended up disappearing though like sometime later like nobody knows what happened to solomon northrup so did he did someone kill him did he get sold into slavery again at some point after he published this book i don't know but highly recommend this book and yeah, slavery is a part of our American history, even though it's terrible, but I think this is a really important book for everybody to be reading. Up next, we have, this one is a memoir, which 12 Years a Slave is a memoir too, but this one, very different. It is Kitchen Confidential by Anthony Bourdain. And this one, it's, if you work in the food industry for one, like you should definitely read this because you'll be able to relate to certain things and just get that connection. So highly recommend that. And Bourdain is just a very entertaining person and he has a very entertaining way of writing and he's a great storyteller. And if you were a fan of his TV shows, then I definitely highly recommend the book. Which, yeah, like if you're familiar with his show and you already know you like his style, then you're sure to like his book. So definitely check that out. And yeah, it's just a look into the world of the restaurant industry and into his life as well and what made him want to become a chef and work in kitchens and he just shares different stories. So yeah, I'm a big Anthony Bourdain fan and highly recommend his book, Kitchen Confidential. But speaking of storytellers, another book I want to recommend that I don't actually own is The Storyteller by Dave Grohl, which is a memoir, I guess memoir? Like each chapter is a story in and of itself from his life. And for the most part, I really enjoyed this book. I actually did a full on book review, which I will link below if you wanna check that out. But yeah, for the most part, like the first three quarters of it were very entertaining and I really enjoyed it. Highly recommend the audiobook in particular because Grohl narrates it himself. I, like I say in my book review, there is like a chapter or two in the end where it kind of starts to drag and just he's 
just sharing different like encounters he's had meeting you know these rock idols of his or musician idols and it just starts to become redundant but for the most part though really enjoyed the book it's a really fun read and very heartfelt and very it feels very genuine and so yeah highly recommend the storyteller by dave Grohl. next up we have this is one of those books immortal life of henrietta Lacks, and this is one where it's like creative nonfiction, where this woman rebecca sklute did 10 years worth of research into henrietta Lacks, and then wrote this fascinating book Again, this is one everybody should read because Henrietta Lacks is like the Gila cells, Gila cells, and they revolutionized the world, the medical industry, the science industry, and like everybody has benefited from this. And Sklu, she tells the story of Henrietta Lacks as well as like the Lacks family, but she'll also go on these side tangents in relation to like science or whatever was happening in the medical world. And they are all just so interesting. And I am not a science person or a medical person, and yet she makes it so digestible for anybody, no matter your background. So highly recommend this book. It is just so interesting and so eye-opening too. So yeah, I recommend this to everybody. And up next are two more memoirs. And so these, I'll share them together, but I want to keep my channel clean so I won't say that full title, but Another Night in Suck City by Nick Flynn. And then he follows that up with The Reenactments. And so The Reenactments is about what it was like for him to have his memoir turned into a movie. So this book, this memoir was turned into a movie called Being Flynn with Robert De Niro and Paul Dano. And then after the movie release, Nick Flynn wrote The Reenactments. And yeah, it's about him. So this book, is about his relationship with his father and his mother and his mother committed suicide so this book covers that obviously to some degree but it's primarily focused on his relationship with his estranged father who he reconnects with in a homeless shelter and his father was an alcoholic and nick himself struggles with addiction so it's a great look into addiction not only having an addiction yourself but having a relationship with someone who has an addiction and he is just an incredible writer. This was one of the best books I read in 2021. I loved it so much. And yeah, he's just, he's a poet as well. And so he just has a beautiful way of writing and he just captures the emotions and just the way it feels in so many of these situations. And he also just has had a life that's worth reading about. Not to say that, you know, everybody has a life that's worth hearing about, I believe. But Nick just has, I don't know, he's just has such an interesting life and it's so insightful and just, I don't know, I really like this one. So I highly recommend it. And then the reenactments was great, especially for my podcast, because I compared it to the book and movie and the reenactments, like it was perfect for someone who does book first movie podcast, because any questions I would have had for him as to what it was like to have this, have his life be turned into a movie, he answers in this book. And it's also interesting because it is like a sequel because we hear what his dad is doing like over 10 years later because the movie was made like over 10 years after the original book. And so this is a sequel in a lot of ways and you get more closure. And he also talks more about his mom's death and how that still affects him. And so these are both just, I don't know, they're books that are just written from the heart and they're just so genuine and beautifully written and just... I just love these so, so much. Highly recommend both of these. And also, if you can't tell, I'm a big fan of memoirs in general. And, you know, it's tough because someone might have a great story to tell, but they're not a very good writer. So the memoir might have a great story, but there's just something missing. And then there's other memoirs where maybe the writer is really good, but their life maybe wasn't particularly worth telling. Like, everybody's life is worth hearing about to some extent, but that doesn't mean you need to write a book about it. But Nick Flynn is the perfect combination because he's an amazing writer and he tells an amazing story of his life in both of these books. So I cannot recommend these enough. Up next is another like researched book and it is Painfully Rich by John Pearson. So it is about the Getty family. And so John Pearson researched into this family uh, John Paul Getty and all of his descendants 
and we go into his parents too and just how he became the person he became uh he was insanely rich if you live in LA you know the Getty Museum there's two of them one in Malibu and one in LA and so he collected like all these pieces of art and when he died they put them in museums but this was a fascinating book it was turned into a movie but the movie really only covers like one aspect of the Getty family and it is you know the the teenager who gets kidnapped but so the movie is good but I really enjoyed this book and it goes more in detail and I've only read this once but I will be reading it again and covering it for my podcast where I will be talking about it and the movie in depth but yeah so this was also just a really fascinating one and next up we have Wise Guy by Nicholas Pileggi and so Nicholas Pileggi was a crime journalist who would specifically write about the mafia and then uh, Henry Hill contacted him because Henry Hill wanted his story told because he was in the mafia, obviously, life in a mafia family. And so Nick Pileggi interviewed him and Henry Hill's wife as well as other people. And then he wrote this book about Henry Hill and it was turned into a movie called Goodfellas. Maybe you've heard of it, <laughs> but I highly recommend the book. It is so entertaining and it's so fascinating just learning how life in the mafia works. So highly recommend this book. It is just as entertaining as the movie, if not more so. Nicholas Pileggi also wrote Casino, which is also nonfiction. However, I have not yet read that, so I can't recommend it because I haven't read it myself, but I will be reading it next year. So I'm really excited because I'm assuming I'll like it since I loved this one so much. And I like, I'm not like a mafia movie person, a gangster movie person necessarily. So I didn't expect to like this book as much as I did. So you don't have to be someone who's like obsessed with, you know, whatever mafia in order to like this book because me, someone who isn't particularly interested in the mafia, found it really interesting. So highly recommend this one. And up next, we have a book by Laura Hillenbrand called Unbroken. And once again, Laura Hillenbrand researched the life of Louis Zamperini, and he was alive at the time she wrote this. So she interviewed him and got to know him really well, did a lot of her own research, and wrote this book about his life. And it was also made into a movie. However, I have not yet, not yet done that movie comparison, but I will be. So stay tuned and you will see my book first movie comparison for Unbroken. Anyway, this book is just... there. It's so well written, for one, and Zamperini had... A fascinating life and he went through so many hardships like this is one of those books where things kind of go from bad to worse but the ending is just so perfect and it just yeah I really loved this book it can be hard to read at times like specifically when he's a POW because there's some difficult things that happen as you can imagine and it's just not there's parts of it that aren't like an uplifting book but by the end like the ending is just the perfect ending for this story so highly recommend this and it goes into um the olympics in germany before world war, world war ii so in the 1930s hitler hosted the olympics then obviously it goes into world war ii because zamperini was um a pilot or he was on a plane and it crashed and then he was floating on a raft but incredible story highly recommend it and speaking of laura hillenbrand this isn't a book i own but Seabiscuit was also a really interesting one. And again, you don't need to be into horse racing in order to enjoy it. Like, who is into horse racing? But Seabiscuit was a fascinating story, very inspirational and motivational. And yeah, it was just a cool story learning about all of these different people and their families and how they came together and had this winning horse that shouldn't have been winning but it was and so that was a really well written one as well but yeah i guess i will mention one more actually and this is another one i don't own but the book by edward snowden called called permanent record that one was an interesting one too and there's obviously so much controversy around edward snowden and so i enjoyed hearing his perspective and his reasons for doing what he did and also getting a look into the government and yeah, I mean, nowadays, like, everybody, you know, we all joke about how, you know, the government is spying through our computer laptops, and they're recording everything we say through Alexa and all that stuff. And so we joke about it now. But 
I don't know, back in 2012, 2013, like when he realized this was happening, like, I mean, it is wrong. It's such a violation of privacy, but so yeah, so it was, I enjoyed hearing his perspective and I really enjoyed that book. And it wasn't one that I was like on the edge of my seat the whole time. It wasn't that kind of a book, but I did enjoy it and I thought it was well written. And then another book I wanted to mention that I don't own is called G.I. War Brides. And this is about women, I believe they're all in England, that married Americans that were there during World War II. And now I did read this a few years ago, but it's the story of like maybe four or five different women and their marriages and their like childhood, but then also their marriages. And that was a really good one. And I went into it thinking, for one, I didn't know it was nonfiction. I thought it was fiction. And I thought it was going to be some cheesy wartime romance, but it was not. These are real stories, real people. And as real life is, like, it wasn't cheesy. It was very, I don't know, very genuine, I guess, and very relatable in some ways. Um, so yeah, highly recommend that one. And then to end this, I'm going to mention one other book, and this is one I would not recommend. I'm currently reading this and it's nonfiction, so I thought I would throw it in there and it's on my mind because I'm reading it, and that is House of Gucci. And so it is a nonfiction book about the Gucci family and the business. And it is not one I would recommend. Like if you're into business related stuff, then yeah, you might enjoy it. But I don't know, like it's about the family, of course, and the family drama, but it's so much about the business and the family uses the business to get at each other, like with different shares and whatever. But as someone, and like I said, Henrietta Lacks, this book, I'm not a science or a medical person, and yet she made it so fascinating for someone who would do is, doesn't even really have much interest in science. Whereas Sarah Gay Harden, I think that's the name of the House of Gucci author, she just didn't do the best job at making it interesting for those who aren't interested in Gucci <laughs> or in business. So I'm still reading it. I, I'm over halfway through, so plugging away. <laughs> Thank goodness for audiobooks because otherwise this would be a tough one to actually be reading. But for the most part, I'm listening to it on audio and that's been helping a lot. But, but yeah, that wraps it up for my recommendations on nonfiction books. And you know, like I love fiction and there's a lot to be gained from reading fiction. So I definitely think you can benefit from fiction books. However, having said that, I do really enjoy nonfiction and just learning about the lives of these real people. And yeah, so I do enjoy reading real stories. It seems to add something more to it. So yeah, I hope you like this video. Comment down below on if you've read any of these books or which ones have piqued your interest thanks to this video. And I hope you enjoyed it and give it a thumbs up if you did. And I will see you next time.